Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be here. I will start by sharing about my career pathway and then give a preview into biomechanics. So this, these are a range of topics and activities that might be part of your life right now. For me, they were definitely part of my life as a middle schooler or a high schooler. And some things you might like. For me, I liked dancing and singing and physics. But there are things that maybe you don't like so much. So I liked math, but I struggled with math my whole life. And I didn't really like reading so much. But as you go through life, you might find a way to incorporate most of what you love and put up with some things that you don't like so much in order to really find yourself a very fulfilling career. So my academic journey and my life started in New York. and. Given the fact that I was interested in many different things, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do, I heard about mechanical engineering, and the college I went to, I heard about, um, called Cooper Union, was free for all students who were admitted. And so I always grew up building things and taking things apart and finding out how things worked. So I figured I'd try mechanical engineering. And I also heard, as you might have heard before, that if you graduate as an engineer, you graduate with certain skill sets that employers really find desirable. So there I was as an undergrad. I started, one of my first classes was a design class, and I just got lucky. I got very lucky because the professor I had had a job in biomechanics, and I never heard of it before. So biomechanics started as early as the 1600s when Borelli wanted to see how loads are distributed through the body. And then the field advanced when Edward Muybridge developed different video technology to study movement. Since then, the field has expanded in such a way that you can study things as big as a whole organism, like an athlete or a dancer, you can study things as small as an individual muscle cell and how those things work. And you can figure out all different ranges in between. So biomechanics is a very wide field that usually incorporates and engineers, physicists, scientists, physical therapy, and I'm very excited to be part of it. If you notice, one of the things I mentioned that I liked on the first slide was video games. And actually, video games are, can be incorporated into biomechanics. And so one of these pictures sh shows an older woman playing with a Wii video game. And so there are different ways to incorporate your likes, like video games, into science. And I'm sure you've seen that already today. So from there, I was very interested in finding out about how dancers do incredible things. One of the th things that they're experts at are turning. So I went to USC to pursue my PhD. There we use different types of sensors in the lab, and I'll explain those in just a bit, to figure out how dancers are able to rotate and balance and move through space. When I was finishing the dissertation, I found out all these intricacies, but I didn't really know the best way to convey the information to the dancers. So I've shown them videos like these, and I've shown them graphs, but I really wanted to start getting into biofeedback and wearable technology. So from there, I went to Michigan to find out more about wearable sensors. So this video right here, there's a flamenco dancer using wearable sensors to control her music. So not only does the computer generate the stick figure that's dancing with her, but depending on how she moves different parts of her body, it would control different parts of the music. With the person who was in charge of that project, I collaborated with him um, on his next big venture into virtual reality. And for that project, I was a motion capture specialist. So I was there helping them capture data for a virtual reality project. It was really exciting. And as I was in the middle of the most important part of my job that day, placing the sensors and the and on the dancer in a very precise way, someone random showed up right next to me and started asking me, hey, why, aren't, why are you putting those sensors there? Why are you putting those sensors there? And the inner New Yorker and awkward scientist in me was like, ooh, just let me do my job. I don't really want to talk right now. But the, you know, the person inside of me that has been growing through these years and these experiences as an undergrad and as a graduate student said, you know, I should give someone, this guy, a chance. I don't know 
what I could learn from him and vice versa. So I told him what, what I was doing and why I was doing it, even though I was a little stressed out. And he happened to tell me about a job, and this is the job that I'm in right now. So he told me that there's a job in Chicago in the orthopedic department of Rush University, and they're looking for, they were looking for someone to help them better understand shoulder mechanics before and after surgeries, as well as how to keep overhead athletes like volleyball players, tennis players, baseball pitchers, how to keep them safe while maintaining a high level of performance. So this is now a new chapter in my life in terms of learning about different surgeries and learning about the shoulder. And this is something that I just started a few months ago. So now I'm in Chicago. Throughout all these experiences and continuing forward, I'd have to say that these are the most important parts that I've learned so far. The best way not to get something is not to try. That's something that the admissions counselor for Cooper Union told me when I was very nervous or you know, thinking I wouldn't get into my undergrad, but I tried and I got in. So you have to hold on to that quote. Don't let fear hold you back. So this is a picture I took when I was extremely scared on top of a rope bridge in Ireland. And I have to say, I didn't even know I was gonna go to Ireland, but my academic path took me there because through research I was able to go present work across the country. So be open-minded, talk to people, learn from people. Had I not talked to that one surgeon who just randomly appeared at the most, most stressful part of my day, I might not be where I am today. So I hope all of you can find something that fulfills you, excites you. I hope you find positive people to surround you and you have very unexpected experiences the way I have. So, now to get into biomechanics. Does anyone have any ideas of how bones move or how we move in space? Feel free to shout it out. Joints, okay. What, muscles, tendons, great. So, we're gonna watch a quick video about muscles. While we're watching this video, I'd like you to think about if it's all real, half real, half fake, or all fake, and why, and what you think those stickers could be. our muscles, our brain sends a signal through electricity to our muscle. And then I think he was also explaining that then that signal can be captured in some way and sent to a computer. So that's what is real about it, in fact, and that's what those stickers do. They act as antenna that pick up the electricity traveling through your muscles when you activate them. And what didn't look so real? Does anyone want to explain? Yes. I don't think you can flex one ab. I agree. So the six pack is actually just one muscle known as the rectus abdominis. And everyone, if you raise your right hand or left hand and you flex your bicep, can you flex one part of your bicep and not the other? What do you think? No, it's just all or one or none if you don't work out at all. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, so that's what we do in our lab, we put these stickers on athletes and dancers and different people that we want to understand how they control their, their movement. And this is called EMG, electromyography. 
It's very similar to the technology used for EKG. So if you ever had your heart monitored, they might put very, very similar st stickers on you. In biomechanics, we also have um, technology to capture movement and the geometry of a body. So we put reflective markers all over someone, and it's the same technology used in video games and different movies. And the different types of cameras pick up these reflective um, markers that we put all over the body, and then we can map these locations of the markers in 3D to 3D geometry of the body. Now we're also really excited that the wearable sensors are getting smaller and smaller. So that example of the flamenco dancer, this dancer has almost a bunch of Apple watches or Fitbits across her whole body. And those sensors are getting smaller and smaller to the point that they're even stickers right now. So that is going to be the future of biomechanics because then we don't have to study dancers and athletes tethered to wires or confined in labs, but we can actually go out in the field. So there's another type of sensor that's very important. A force is a push or pull, and some of you might have learned Newton's laws already, and some of you haven't, so this might be a re review for some. But a push force is a push or pull, which means that it has a size or magnitude and a direction. So if, we, if I wanted to apply a force to this clicker right here, I could push on it in a specific direction with a specific amount, or I could pull on something, right? And maybe I, I won't, don't want to do that right now. But when forces are uneven, they cause acceleration. So right now, what are some forces that might be acting on you? Weight or gravity. And what else? Contact normal force. And where is that um, applied on you right now if you're sitting? Yeah, everyone's kind of pointing. So wherever you're in contact with the chair, the chair is applying a force back to you, which is preventing you from dropping to the center of the earth. So we can measure these things called reaction forces using different sensors in the lab. So here's an example of a dancer, and you see one of the forces on her feet on the left video, and then you see both forces from each foot from an overhead camera showing us side-to-side -side forces. And so in my dissertation, we studied how they change those forces in order to rotate more than once. So a single turn versus a double turn versus a triple turn. And here's an example of a different type of turn where we see the video of the forces as she's pushing on the ground and as she's spinning and balancing. So putting all of these sensors together, here's an example um, of using all three types of sensors in my lab where we have motion capture. We see the little reflective markers on the person's body on the left. Then we see the computer version of the person's body along with these arrows that are switching from pointing inward to pointing outward. Those are the, for the reaction forces. And then on the right screen, we see the muscle activation. So here's a closer look. So this is really giving us a behind the scenes to figure out how people do things that are really exciting. But first, we also need to figure out how they do things very simply. So even though she's standing there and it looks like not much is going on from the outside, there's very different muscle recruitments that are happening. So she's activating different muscles. So when the, the force vector, the reaction force, points outward, she's using her hip adductors. So she's trying to squeeze her two legs together. When she's doing that, if she were on something slippery, if she was on an ice skating rink, what would happen? She could fall, but do you think the feet would stay where they are? No, they would get closer together. So because she's not on an ice skating rink, the floor is pushing backwards on her using the friction force, and that's why that force vector is tilting outwards when she's using her hip abductors. adductors. Next are the hip abductors. They do the opposite. So in biomechanics, ad abduction, you could think of it as like an alien abduction. It's when something wants to be taken away from the middle line of the body. So when she uses her hip abductors, she's pushing outwards. If she were on an ice skating rink, what would happen? Maybe she'd get into a split, but since she's not, again, the, f the floor is holding her there by providing a reaction force towards the center of her body. So this is an example I wanted to share with you today, just to get you thinking about all of 
the complicated things going on behind the scenes of our body. And um, as Faye introduced me, she, ex she explained how we want to use this information not only to describe how people do things, but also help them improve how they do things. So it, there's a trade-off between having an athlete run faster and faster and faster, but then they might be susceptible to injury, or there's a trade-off where you get them so safe that they're not performing well. So this is where my research is going to lead into, into actually applying what we learn, and really excited to see how this all fits together.